good afternoon all uh, thanks uh, uh, thank you juliet and all the conference members for providing me such a great opportunity to present my work in such a reputed conference uh, this is kumari preeti phd scholar under the supervision of professor sanjeev kumar sharma from ccs university merit now the title of my uh, paper is synthesis and characterization of au nanoparticles and capsulated zinc oxide for sensor selectivity now the index of my work is what is camo sensor why do we need camo sensor types of camo sensor some recent trends in zinc oxide and in the noble metal dot zinc oxide now the experimental work results and discussion and finally the conclusion now what is a camo sensor a camo sensor or a molecular sensor is an uh, analytical device uh, which detects the uh, which detects the analyte uh, to produce a readable signal which can be in the form of electrical or optical now it is comprised of the two unit binding subunit and the signaling subunit binding subunit is also uh, called as the receptor of which recognizes the analyte or the gas and here the analytes can be uh, metallic ions or the environmentally ha uh, hazardous molecules and the signaling subunit produces the signal in the form of electrical and optical also in uh, it can be in the form of a uh, fluorescence now uh, here in the figure when the analyte has been detected the uh, here uh, it has a change in color or it glows now why do we need camo sensor as the industrialization and the digitalization is increasing uh, the waste disposal is increasing in the uh, in the drainage water uh, the the waste can be from the industries uh, from the medical from the pharmaceutical or from the houses like uh, like from the batteries uh, memory cards all these are disposed into the drainage water uh this drained uh, drainage water is contaminated by the uh, metallic uh, by the toxic metallic ions and the hazardous molecules now this water is when go through the sedimentary layers of the soil and uh, went uh, went uh, through the uh, transportation method in the crops uh, then these crops are taken by the human and by the repetition uh, there is a accumulation of these metallic ions in the human body say human organs uh, when the accumulation is so when the accumulation is high then this is the root cause of different diseases which can be cardiological uh, lung uh, lung based diseases um, and the, also cancer now cadmium is also very toxic and carcinogenic metal uh, a major uh, exposure source is smoking and through food uh, but inhalation of cadmium contain, uh, containing dust is more dangerous route cadmium can be found in electroplated uh, steel pigmented in plastic electric batteries and so on these are the diseases shown in the figure uh, by the arsenic cadmium and mercury now the type of camo sensor the camo sensor is of two type optical sensors and the electro uh, electrochemical sensors in these two uh, my uh, my work is on the fluorescence spectroscopy now the basic approach of camo sensors are binding site signaling subunit displacement as a uh, displacement assay approach camo uh, uh, camo dosimeter approach and the nanostructure i'm working on the nanostructure which can be nanoparticles nano rods nanotubes nano bells or the nano flowers now the fluor now what is a fluorescence sensor fluorescence camo sensor Flu uh, it is also the necessary components are signaling moiety and the recognition moiety signaling moiety say fluorophore and the recognition moiety which is a receptor here the receptor binds the analyte uh, in the different set of analytes say metallic ions or molecules and the signaling sub, uh, sub unit uh, works as a transducer uh, transducer uh, which uh, uh, which emits the signal in the form of electrical and optical now the electrical uh, electrochemical sensor here the essential components are a receptor that's that binds the analyte and a transducer to convert the reaction into a measurable electrical signal here the electrode 
uh, is like uh, zinc oxide. Now when uh, uh, now uh, it also uh, it also used as a transducer. Uh, it amplifies the signal and is uh, the signal is sent to the output device uh, like computer or another electronic device. Now the material, uh, now that there are different materials uh, that are used for making of camo sensors, which can be uh, different metal oxide like zinc oxide, uh, magnesium oxide, molybdenum oxide, tin oxide, ferrous oxide, indium oxide, titanium, uh, titanium oxide, copper oxide, etc. These metal oxide are, are used owing to non-toxic, low cost, ease of fabrication, human friendly, and can be used in food processing, packing, and the preservation industry as well. Now, the different researcher use the different materials for the uh, for the uh, for making the camo sensors, and uh, some of them, uh, some of the research trends are uh, I have shown in this slide. Now, uh, first. Nagmani et al. synthesized nanocrystalline TiO2 thin film, and uh, he checked uh, the sensor selectivity for the H2S gas, and the response time uh, response time uh, is high for the 40, uh, response time is 45 second at the 100 degree centigrade. Now the song et al. synthesized uh, magnesium oxide hollow unicorn like microsphere with cavities, and the uh, he's uh, he checked the sensor selectivity for the H2O2. Now, Meg et al. synthesized SNO2 spherical particles, and he checked the sensor selectivity uh, for the hydrogen uh, at 600 degrees centigrade for 4 hour. It, um, it gives the best sensor selectivity. Now, the Lee et al. synthesized copper oxide grape-like structure, and uh, he showed the best, uh, best selectivity for the H2S gas at the, uh, in, in the time, 5,000 seconds. Now, Singh et al. synthesized SNO2 nanoparticles and showed the sensor selectivity for the hydrogen gas. And Sohan et al. synthesized carbon dot MNO2 nanospheres, showed the sensor selectivity for G, uh, G, uh, GSH biomolecule. Now, uh, as I have studied, these uh, metal oxide have some uh, limitations which are SNO2 thin film tend to stabilize after approximate 25 days, but the selectivity to target carbon monoxide seem to decrease during the test. Also, the response time of different uh, FeO, um, ferrous oxide nanoparticles decrease after 30 days. The common problem they encounter are low response, poor stability that cannot ensure a long sensor life. Now to overcome uh, these limitations, I have used the material uh, zinc oxide. Now, why nanostructured zinc oxide is compatible for camo sensor? Because camo sensor, because zinc oxide is a direct wide band gap semiconductor, that is 3.37 electron volt. It has high excitonic binding energy, 60 milli electron volt, unique and good Photos, uh, photophysical properties. It is biocompatible in nature, low toxicity, stable in aqueous solution, transparent to visible light, and can be made highly conductive. Uh, and there are diverse range of nanostructures for which, uh, cam uh, for which we can make camo sensors. Now, these are, the, uh, these are the some recent trends of camo sensor, which are done by the different researchers and which are shown in a single slide. Now, uh, Tamuri et al. synthesized zinc oxide thin film and he checked the sen uh, sensor selectivity for the formic acid. Now, the, uh, now uh, the Tashika et al. synthesized zinc, ex uh, zinc oxide nanostructure and showed the, um, and, uh, uh, and made different sensors and checked the sensor selectivity with 15Z. Uh, 5S sensor. Now, Liu et al. synthesized zinc oxide nanotube and checked the sensor selectivity for the H2S gas. Uh, now, the uh, Liu et al. synthesized nano, uh, zinc oxide nano spirals and, uh, uh, and, found, and found the best uh, selectivity for nitrous oxide gas. 
Now, this is the paper my mentor has published in the sensor and at incubator B. And uh, this, uh, this also show the chemo, uh, chemo sensor selectivity for the mercuric ions. The title of that paper, uh, paper is Saline Decorated Nanostructures that I know chemo sensor for the detection of mercuric ions. He prepared four different microstructures zinc, uh, like zinc oxide nanoparticles, zinc oxide nanodumbles, zinc oxide nanoflowers, and the zinc oxide nanowires. And he checked the selectivity for, uh, uh, for the four samples containing different, con uh, different concentration of mercury and having different metallic ions. And uh, for in the first sample, the peak shown below, uh, uh, peak shown below uh, uh, clear, uh, clearly, uh, uh, clearly uh, predicts that, uh, that it is uh, good for the sensor selectivity for mercuric ions. Uh, like uh, like in the all three images. Now, uh, he also checked the uh, sensitivity of nanostructure ZNO. The prepared co uh, complex of the saline decorated ZNO microstructure for the samples N1 to N4 showed a detection range up to a 60, 120, 100, and uh, 110 micromolar with a detection limit of 20 nanomolar, 18 nanomolar, 35 nanomolar, and the 10 nanomolar respectively. The prepared receptor showed high selectivity for mercury, mercury ions and no interference from any other metal ions. Now, for improving uh, the selectivity, I have incorporated or say dog noble metal. Now the noble metal dog nanoparticle coated zinc oxide for sensor selectivity. Here, so surface decoration by platinum, silver, gold, palladium. These all are noble metals, etc. Nanoparticles have shown to affect many sensor characteristics, including the sensitivity. In a, uh, sensitivity, which is enabling the detection of even trace amount of gases. It is also, it is increased the, uh, the sensitivity. It is the selectivity towards certain uh, gaseous species. It also increases the response and recovery times, which have been substantially reduced and uh, acceptable operating temperature, which have been shifted to values close to the ambient conditions. Now, these are the recent trends of the noble metal do uh, dog zinc oxide, and it also tells how the pure zinc oxide, uh, how the noble metal do uh, dog zinc oxide is better than the pure zinc oxide for the chemo sensors. Here, the Gong et al. synthesized zinc oxide AU nanoparticles, and here he clearly depicted that it shown the uh, selectivity for the toluene gas uh, for the noble metal top sensor. Here, the, in Wang, uh, Wang et al. synthesized uh, three-dimensionally ordered microspheres uh, at 0.025% AU zinc oxide indium. And it, show, it, uh, it also clearly depicts that it showed the best sensor selectivity for the ethanol for uh, 0.05% AU zinc oxide indium than the black one, uh, pure zinc oxide indium. Now, Lee et al. Uh, uh, synthesized calcinide platinum AU at the rate zinc oxide uh, CS nanoparticles. Here, uh, it also depicts that the uh, camo sensor selectivity increases on incorporation of noble metal and here it is a selective for hydrogen gas. For hydrogen gas and zinc oxide, the pure zinc oxide is showing less selectivity. Now, the Zia et al. synthesized AU zinc oxide nanoparticles, and he also clearly, uh, clearly uh, showed that uh, uh, the gold dot zinc oxide showed best selectivity for acetone than the pure zinc oxide. Now, this is the paper. Uh, this is the paper on the noble metal dot. Noble metal here is uh, silver. 
noble metal dot zinc oxide for sensor selectivity. This is also the published paper by my mentor Sanjeev Kumar Sharma, and which is synthesis and characterization of hybrid LEDs that are nanocomposite for the application of sensor selectivity. He uh, he synthesized uh, uh, zinc oxide and the uh, different samples with the incorporation of different concentration of silver. Of, the, uh, of silver and made five samples. Now this is the PL and FL spectra of AGZNO nanocomposite. In the first PL spectra of hybrid AGZNO nanocomposite, uh, first we obtained the uh, NBE peak at 390 and the DLE peak for zinc oxide nanoflower at 600 as the AG concentration increases the NBE peak, the NBE peak diminishes and DLE peak shifted from 600 to 500. And uh, this is the FL uh, spectra of hybrid AGZ and no nanocomposite for the all five samples. Now my work here, experimental uh, in this material and synthesis results, FSM, XRD, HRM, STEM, SAED, UVisible and the PL. In the discussion part, outcomes and the future perspective, and uh, my topic is synthesis and characterization of a nanoparticle encapsulated zinc oxide for sensor selectivity. Now, in the experimental work, core shell zinc oxide AU nanocomposite were synthesized in two steps. First, zinc oxide nanoflowers were synthesized from the precursors zinc nitrate, hexahydrate, and HMTA by the hydro uh, by the hydrothermal method and the secondly the hybrid gold nanoparticle coated zinc oxide nanocomposite were prepared from the colloidal au nanoparticle with the preference of uh, a diluted hcl uh, uh, hcl concentration from 0 uh, to 30 millimolar uh, and dispersed into the 10 ml now, uh, this is the synthesis method of zinc oxide gold here. First we mix, first we mix zinc nitrate, hexahydrate, HMTA and D, uh, DI water. Then we, uh, then we got a zinc oxide solution, which is then transferred to the autoclave. And then the solution is kept on the hot plate at 130 degree for half, two and half, two, three, four and eight hour. Now, um, now the obtained solution is filtered and washed. Now we have got a white precipitate. Then with this white precipitate is dried in an oven, electric oven at 60 degree, 80 degree and 300 degree centigrade. And we obtain the microstructures, which can be depending on the time, nanoparticles, nanorods, nanodumbles, nanorod flowers, nanowire flowers. And finally, uh, we, uh, we will test it for the chemosensor selectivity from, uh, from the FL and EI or, or EIS. Uh, now, the, uh, now the five samples are prepared uh, by, the, uh, by, uh, by the incorporation of 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 millimolar HCL, uh, uh, which is 30%. And the five samples are obtained and um, and in the first step, when we didn't uh, didn't uh, doped AU nanoparticle, we obtained zinc oxide nanoflowers, uh, uh, nanoflowers, or say the rod-like structures, which are uh, which are bind at the one end, and the other end is ganglic free. Now this is the uh, SAM images of the core shell zinc oxide AU uh, here. In the first A image, uh, we have pure zinc oxide and the nanoflowers are obtained as the AU, um, as the, uh, AU concentration is increased with HCl from 0 to 30 millimolar. Uh, the different, uh, uh, we obtain the different microstructure and we move towards the uh, nanosponge structure. It also, it also confirm uh, uh, as we uh, proceed towards the final sample, the encapsulation of gold increases uh, from first sample to the last sample. And here, finally, the nanosponges are obtained. 
Now, this is the STEM mapping. And in the STEM mapping, it clearly, uh, clearly depicts that uh, the encapsulation of zinc, uh, the gold encapsulated zinc oxide in the AU1 sample and the encapsulation increases in the ZNO AU5. And the different here, the different elements are shown by the different color, like uh, in purple, zinc, in blue, oxygen, and in blue, uh, and in green is gold. Now, some additional uh, experiments are done for uh, uh, are done for the uh, to see the encapsulation and uh, uh, and to see uh, how our mixture is obtained. First one is the uh, uh, and these images are for the AU1 and the AU5 samples. In the first image of BFM, we obtained the uh, gold nanoparticle encapsulated zinc oxide. It clearly uh, shows. Uh, in the SAAD pattern, the bright, uh, the bright spot are diminished from AU1 sample to AU5 sample, and it stated that it is a mixture of crystalline and amorphous. Now, this is the X, uh, this is the XRD pattern of zinc oxide gold. Now, for the uh, for the pure zinc oxide, the uh, uh, the pattern, the peaks obtained here are matched to the uh, JCPDC data card. And as the incorporation of gold in, uh, increases uh, uh, from uh, 0 to 30 millimolar HCl, the, uh, the additional peaks are obtained, which are shown by the star, which are shown by the star. Uh, and, uh, uh, and these peaks are 111 and 002 these peaks are due to the uh, uh, these peaks showed that uh, these are correspond to the gold now this is the fwhm uh, versus or uh, uh, crystallite size strain uh, versus samples now here the fwhm uh, the fwhm decreases from uh, in sorry increases from uh, 0 0.19 to 0.23 uh, here the d uh, decreases from 44 nano uh, 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 44 to 22 and uh, the strain size increases from 2.5 to 4.7 um 4.7 variation of fwhm and the crystalline size uh, uh, is shown for all the five samples. Now, these are the optical properties. First is the optical band gap, and second is the refractive index and Arbeck tail. In the optical band gap, uh, uh, this is shown for all the five samples. And uh, here, the insert, uh, insert plot is the tau plot, which clearly indicates the band gap is 3.26. Here, the band gap decreases from 3.26 to 2.94 uh, electron volt in the refractive index and uh, now uh, for the graph B, refractive index and Arbeck tail. Here the Arbeck energy decreased from 0 0.335 to 0 0.318 electron volt and the refractive index increased from 2.33 to 2.41. Now, the graph shows the photoluminescence spectra here. Uh, we have obtained the, uh, we have obtained two peaks, NVE and the DLE peak. As the concentration of HCl is, in, uh, is increased from zero to 30 millimolar uh, uh, in the uh, gold nanoparticles, um, uh, the NVE peak disappears and the DLE peak is shifted from 600 to 500. And uh, the, uh, these emissions are obtained due to different defects, which can be zinc and oxygen vacancies. Uh, zinc and oxygen uh, vacancies, uh, zinc, uh, zinc and oxygen interstitials, and the antisides of oxygen and zinc.
Now this is the temperature dependent PL. The temperature uh, dependent PL is done at the different temperature from 150K to 300K. Here, the NV peak is not present. Uh, only the peak present here is DLE peak. As the temperature is decreased from 300K Kelvin to 150 Kelvin, uh, the energy peak increased from 2.47 to 2.67 electron volt. Now, this is the energy band structure and mechanism of blue shift. Uh, here, uh, the, uh, the band gap uh, is between the valence band and the conduction band. And uh, the, uh, the levels are donor level and the acceptor level. Uh, the, the defect levels are obtained due to the oxygen and zinc vacancy, uh, ox uh, due to the zinc and the oxygen interstitials and the, and the other defects. Now the defect level are decreased by the incorporation of gold. And here, the, uh, here uh, we have got the orange emission and, uh, and at the last sample, like in zinc oxide gold, AU5, green emission is obtained at 2.48 electron volt. Here also, uh, this is the summary, which is shown by the graphical, uh, which is shown graphically. And uh, 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 th this is the image of core shell zinc oxide nanocomposite, or say, gold encapsulated zinc oxide. Now, uh, this is the, uh, uh, this graphical abstract uh, shows that this is the BF TAM image of gold and zinc oxide and the STM mapping of gold here. The zinc oxide is in the middle or encapsulated by the gold. And here we have nano sponges or this is the uh, SAM image. Now here we have obtained the blue shift from uh, blue shift and which is obtained from 600 to 500. Now, summary, the core shell zinc oxide A nanoparticle nanocomposite was synthesized successfully by using the sole gel method. Microstructural analysis of zinc oxide gold confirmed the nanosponges with woodside hexagonal structure of zinc oxide. The T of zinc oxide gold decreased from 44 to 22 uh, nano, uh, nanomolar and uh, tau decreased from 2.5 into 10 raised to power minus 3 to 4.7 into 10 to the power minus 3 as the HCl concentration of colloidal AU nanoparticle increased from 10 millimolar to 30 millimolar. The band gap and the RPEC energy of zinc oxide AU samples were decreased from 3.26 to 2.96 electron volt and from 0 0.335 to 0 0.318 electron volt as samples varied from pure zinc oxide to zinc oxide AU5 respectively, while risk, uh, refractive index was increased. The orange emission was observed due to the orange interstitials and dominate with other defect, which uh, increased the fraction of AU nanoparticle attachment with zinc oxide nanostructure and greatly tuned emission from 600 nanomolar to uh, 500 nanometer green emission at 2.48 electron volt. The blue shift of PL defect emission is attributed that gold nanoparticle encapsulated zinc oxide nanocomposite can be used for the sensor selectivity of future, perfect, uh, future perspective of biosensors. These are the references.